Since revamping my wardrobe around two and a half years ago, I have added a lot of things that I really love to wear and wear all the time. But lately, I've also found myself sort of gaining a bit of momentum regarding shopping. So I'm going to make this video talking about the 12 things within my wardrobe that I absolutely do not want to let go of. Because if you cannot remember to actively appreciate the things that you already have, there's no use in adding more things anyway. This was actually really hard. So many of these pieces really make up cornerstones of my personal style. So I decided on 12 things because I couldn't cut it down further. But outside of that, I have like a, a list of things I also wouldn't want to give up. The first thing that I picked is my charcoal coat from The Curated. This makes a lot of appearances on my channel and for good reasons. First of all, I only have two winter coats. And second of all, I just love it so much. When I started revamping my wardrobe, this was sort of like the first like extremely wearable piece that I bought in this great quality. It's made up of wool and cashmere. It's very simple, very Scandinavian lines, so it goes very well with my style, but it also is just of such immaculate quality. It doesn't matter how many times it's been folded or used or sat on, it has really 100% hold its shape. I'm close to 200 times of wear on this coat as of now and you cannot tell the difference from the first day I got it to now. And that is one of the reasons that next time I added a winter coat, I picked one from the same brand. I'm fully expecting these coats to last me the rest of my life. When you have something that follows you for a really long time, that thing stays around to define your style for you, which is one of the things I really think is so underrated. Like we think of personal style in terms of what we buy rather than taking into account that the things that we already own and wear all the time are actually the things that does make up our personal style. So if we're wearing something new all the time, it's like our personal style really never gets to manifest. And I think that this gray coat was like a great beginning for me in realizing all of this. And so the next thing that I really would hate to lose or let go of is my Jill Sander blazer. I was looking for a navy blazer for a really long time and I found this second hand on a vesti air. It was a little bit different from what I had imagined finding. The fit was just a bit slimmer, the color is a bit darker, but none of that mattered when I received the blazer. Jill Sander is definitely a high-end brand. Their blazers go for literally thousands of dollars, but I found this for 170. I have no clue how much it's been worn before, but I think I've worn it about like 75 times now, and this is another piece together with the gray coat where you just cannot tell that it's been worn. I've had it dry cleaned a couple of times because I usually use it to go out and about and I use it so much that it's been dirty a few times and again it just shows absolutely no signs of wear. This is also a blazer where every part of the blazer is made up of natural fibers. I feel it is often quite difficult to get your hands on blazers that isn't cut with some sort of polyester but this is wool, silk and cupro eye believe. To me, it just looks exquisite, it looks expensive, and it goes really well with everything in my wardrobe, and it's another thing that has become like a cornerstone within my style. I decided to include jewelry in this list, and for that reason, the next thing I added to my list is my cow bracelet. I had this custom made, but it would definitely be possible to buy it once again, but I will imagine for the sake of this video that I wouldn't be able to, and in that case, it is absolutely not something I would want to lose. The cars are a stable of Switzerland. It's part of Swiss tradition and I always get comments on it and now it just becomes like such a part of my style. It's very unique to other jewelry in general and also other jewelry that I have. It's like a leather cuff with these gold details and it's very special to me just both because of where in the mountains that I bought it but also again it's just become like synonymous with me and my personal style. And staying in the same theme within jewelry. The next thing within my wardrobe that I truly appreciate is my antique ring. I bought this off of my ex's best friend who is an art dealer and I had been looking and trying on this ring for a year before I finally bought it off of him. First of all, it's from before the birth of Christ. It comes from old Persia, so it's really, really old. It is antique and it's carved with these two deer-like figures, which was my favorite animal growing up. It's so rare that you can find something that's this special and unique, obviously, and is by far also the most 
unique thing that I own and for that reason I also appreciate it that much more. I appreciate the history behind it and I appreciate the age it comes with. The next thing that I added to the list, I was a little bit in doubt of whether to add it or not but I decided to go ahead and it's because it's quite new. It is my black mini skirt. I added it because a black mini skirt is an absolute staple of my wardrobe but it's quite difficult for me to find one that I really love that has the exact shape that I wanted to have. It might seem like a miniscule thing but I need that skirt to be perfect and the last time I had a black skirt that was perfect like this I ruined it and I felt that that really messed with my style for a long time and it took me a really long time to find something that I loved just as much so I did decide to include it because it is in impeccable quality even though it's cut with a bit of polyester and it's an absolute stable to the silhouettes within my wardrobe. The next thing on my list is my Ghani slip dress with the orange petals. This is also something that I will wear so much in summer. Actually, usually with my Jill Sander blazer, this is like a regular outfit for me for going out. It's 100% silk and I appreciate it so much, but I will be very honest, I think so much of the part of why I appreciate it as much as I do is the fact that I picked it up for like $30 on eBay. I got so lucky. It's been obsolete for years and I just think it is so unique and special and beautiful. I have a few other slip dresses Dresses, like the pink one but they're so basic and there's just something so special about this. I never told you guys this before but I actually have two of them. Shortly after I found another one online in two sizes up and I have it in my basement and I have thought many times of whether or not to sell it on but I'm not quite ready yet which is ridiculous because now I have two of the same dress so it's funny that I'm sitting here saying like this is something I don't want to give up when it goes obsolete like I literally mean that because I bought a second one which to be fair I only did because again the the price is not that much and I know that should I ever change my mind since it is a secondhand piece I am very likely to get exactly the amount of money back for it that I purchased it for and then it will be to no loss of mine. Really love that dress and I am very excited to be wearing it with this new blazer this summer as well. The next thing I would hate to see leave my wardrobe is my Love Rules Forever ring from Swiss brand Answa. I have quite a bit of things from Answa as of now. They're also the creator of my gingham tote bag, but I originally bought this because I have two Swiss girlfriends here, which where one of them I'm very close to, and they originally had this ring, and they kind of just inspired me to get it, and now I wear it every day. My whole jewelry setup is like a stable for me at this point, so it's also made of 24 karat gold, which to me, as soon as something is of the best quality as can be. It does take up a more special place in my attachment to the item. The next thing on my list is my Hermes bag. And yes, this is probably on my list partly because it was very expensive and that it is an Hermes bag. But this was also one of the first things I really bought myself that was of great quality. Prior to owning this bag, I've been used to using like just a tote bag, like a net for the longest time. So this was like really a, a gift to myself, a very big gift, must I say. But it also sort of introduced me to the fact that even when it comes to very nice things, I often do like a more casual shape. This is a style bag that I love so much that I could see myself at one in a pop of color somewhere way down the line. The next thing I added to my list, I was a little bit in doubt of whether to add or not because this is actually something that even though I appreciate them so, so much, they will probably leave me very soon. And it is my Vagabond to boot the original pointy-toed ones. Vagabond makes beautiful, great leather shoes. And especially for the price, I think the quality is amazing, but it only goes that far because I have worn these shoes 160 times and I would like to believe that I have been taking really good care of them but nonetheless even though I had them fixed up completely by a cobbler the leather has just seen its best days. There are some serious creasing in the leather and he did his best and he did fix the seams where they were also falling apart a little bit and stuff like that but I can't imagine that I will get 160 times more wear out of these shoes and it honestly breaks 
breaks my heart. I have something kind of similar now, but not 100%. Vagabond also makes like a similar style now, but again, not 100%. And it just goes to show that it's heartbreaking when you do become really good at like assessing your style and knowing what to add and not. When you have something like a shoe that eventually will give in, give up on you. Like mentioned, I have been really happy with Vagabond's quality, but I also do imagine had I aimed for something more high end or were they more high end, had they maybe not lasted even longer than I think probably when you think about men's dress shoes they wear them so much more like literally hundreds of times and they hold up much longer and and looks uh, beautiful for much longer than my vagabond boots did. Thing number 10 on my list is a top from a reformation. This is a top without sleeves. It came to me almost perfectly. It did gave a little bit at the chest, which I then, I took the top to my tailor and he fixed it right up. That is my favorite tip, by the way. If something doesn't fit perfectly, take it to your tailor and it will fit like a glove. I believe the top is made of 100% viscose and it just fits my body so beautifully. It hugs it in all the right places. I'm quite busty but I don't have to wear a bra with this and it still looks really nice. I often wear this with a blazer, usually my Jill Sander blazer, my dark Evelyn jeans and then my favorite boots for a going out outfit that just works for me every single time. What I love about Reformation's tops in general is that they often look so delicate but they just aren't. Like I have washed this top so many times now for what type of top it is. It's actually quite amazing how many times I've worn it and again it shows absolutely zero times of wear which for a top like this like a tank top it's just to me it just blows me away. Another reason I would hate to see this top go is that when you do find something that just works and is super simple. Like honestly, finding something like that is you don't get tired of. I found in my past has been quite rare. So now that it's here, I absolutely do not want to let it go. And it brings me to my next thing on the list, which is another top from a Reformation. This is a bit more casual. Actually, it has a rip to it, which I do not like. And nonetheless, I love this top so much. Wear it a ton. It has this deep V in the front and a deep V in the back. I usually wear it with no bra, but with these like little silicone pads. And it's just, in my opinion, such a classic look. I'll wear it with jeans or usually my black skirt. It's such a classic cut. When I wear it, I do have to pull at it a little bit throughout the night, but it's really not a lot considering just how deep the Vs are off this top. I would be very excited to add more things with a cut like this in the future, but I do think they're quite hard to come about where they really look this great. Thing number 12 on my list that I really appreciate and I would hate to let go of is actually this necklace that I'm wearing right now. It's nothing special per se. It's brass and then a large pearl. I found it in a local store here in Zurich. The brand is originally from Seattle. I've been browsing the store a little bit and I don't feel like adding more jewelry is that high on my list of priorities right now, but when I do, I'll be sure to look at Ferris again. I really feel like their designs fit very beautifully in with my style. They have a lot of things that I really like and I just really love this necklace. I think the reason that I love it so much is that I bought it right when I feel like I had sort of really sorted out my personal style and I was starting to buy things on instinct and then see seeing them actually pan out within my wardrobe. Like I could start to plan less and sort of almost trust my crow brain. Like the impulse you get to buy new things. Usually you buy something and it turns out like you should have probably not added it because it doesn't fit in with your style. And this was just like not the case. Like when I first bought the necklace, it was on impulse. And I actually went home thinking like, that was really dumb. Like, why did you do that? Like, I don't want to go return it in this small boutique and you just got carried away. But as time went on, I saw that I was totally wrong in assuming that. And I started wearing it every single day. It's a bit more special than other necklaces that I have and I think it suits my style so beautifully and now that I find it so unique within my style I would absolutely hate to see it go. That was actually a thing that made the list but that was difficult. Like I did have quite a few other things that I really also wouldn't want to get rid of for different reasons. One of them is my Burberry trench like that was a really great find and I also wear it a ton but I could also see myself like adding a similar style but in black 
bag also from Burberry should I ever lose out on this one. Like I appreciate it a lot within my wardrobe, but it's something that my style would be able to do without if I'm being totally honest. It doesn't mean I don't wear it all the time. I just, I could see myself finding a substitute for it. If, I, if need be. Another thing that also didn't make the list is my Ansoa bag. That's simply because of the fact that I didn't want to make the list too long. These types of bags are to be found all over town in Zurich, again because it is a Zurich brand. It's just also become like a staple within my style. It's just something that's so easy to throw on and I think it suits my look very well. It's also something that I would hate to let go of. It didn't make the list but I would be very sad not to be able to wear it. Same goes for my next thing which is my Ghani sweater. The leopard sweater. I love a leopard print but in my opinion so many of them look so cheap and I also think it's hard to find something that is of really good quality. Like these more trendy prints often come in other types of fabrics where this sweater is 100% wool and I use it all the time to drape it over my shoulders and just add something extra to my often otherwise sort of like basic look or at the very least like a block color. I don't have a lot of things in prints and this one inspires everything up. I'm actually really happy with it. Then a few other things I would hate to let go, which is actually from this season, is like the pink cashmere turtleneck and also my blue wool turtleneck. Just these type of things that are quite basic, but because I found them in the exact right colors and the exact right fabrics, it's just things that I would hate to let go of. Like something like the pink turtleneck for me. Like I imagine it wouldn't be very hard to find like a hot pink turtleneck in H&M, but when you find something of, again, impeccable quality that really fits, it just takes a much more more special place in my heart within my wardrobe. Another thing I also briefly considered adding is my pulling bag, the new camel one. I do wear it all the time. Honestly, I was a little bit skeptical at first, like I did take some time to warm up for it, but it's also quite interesting to see again how even if I take time to warm up to things now that I have all these rules and guidelines to add to my wardrobe from, it's usually always a hit and never a miss. Like when I really take the time to research something and I buy it, it's almost most never a mistake and I do find a reason to wear it because I added it because I had already analyzed my way to the fact that it would make sense within my wardrobe. So that was my entire list and the things that didn't make it. Again, I really think it's just so important to appreciate the things that you already have. If you cannot appreciate what you own, then how can you expect to appreciate your wardrobe just because you're adding more things to it? But I will also say that that only goes to a certain extent because before I really came up with strong rules and guidelines for how to curate my wardrobe, I did not have a lot of things that I appreciated simply because of the fact that the things that I would add was not things that I appreciated. Like they were made from polyester and they didn't have the right color for me and I took less care into my decision. And it's a lot harder to trick yourself into appreciating the things that generally you see a lot less value in. So when you really start to pay attention to what you value in clothes and why and start buying from these values, it's also so much easier to appreciate the things when they then are part of your wardrobe. If you liked this little casual chat, please give this video a, a like so that I know. And if you're here for the first time, not already subscribed to my channel, then consider doing that because I would love to keep you around. I'll see you in the next video.